backbone of treatment for prostate cancer is androgen deprivation therapy. And, and I think to be very clear, you know, we often just lump hormone therapy all together, but ADT is lowering, it's depriving androgen. So that in and of itself is what it is. And that's actually the FDA's threshold. So of the numerous forms of ADT that have been approved over the years, Luprolide and Gosarelin and all these different ones um, that have come to be Degarelix, it's can you achieve sustained castration rates? Can you lower testosterone effectively, right? So that's what ADT is. It's not when we approve new ADT agents, it's not to say does, you know, this improves survival like you would with drugs like abiraterone or enzalutamide, which are um, different mechanisms of action with different entire intentions themselves uh, of the reason we use them. So um, Relagolix was developed because there are no oral um, ADT forms of therapy. And the only uh, GNRH antagonist that's used, that's injectable is Degarelix, which has pluses and it's sort of testosterone kinetic profile. It has some minuses. It's a monthly injection, as well as there are some injection site reactions. And so a lot of patients, and we've seen this very clearly with the drugs like enzalutamide and abiraterone and apalutamide and darolutamide, that oral therapy, a lot of patients prefer. Um, so Relagolix is just one pill a day. Um, and so it, it it's kinetics, it's testosterone kinetics by rapidly castrating patients with you know, much faster than a GNRH agonist, as well as a, a more rapid recovery of testosterone makes it very ideal when you're giving a finite course of ADT. That most often is done in the context of radiation, whether that's short-term or long-term hormone therapy. So this study looked at two randomized trials, one in a localized disease state, one in a more advanced disease state of patients that use the drug with radiation therapy and just to make sure that is there any unexpected interaction or side effect worsening or testosterone kinetic profile differences, just to really make sure, because I think one of the more common instances it's being used is with radiation. So this was just to provide that extra granularity um, for these men. And I think it showed, fortunately, what we expected. It's rapid T suppression, rapid T recovery, no real observed interaction with side effects uh, with the radiation therapy. Um, and so to me, is it provides a nice alternative for many men who are interested in, in that, taking an oral pill as well as having that testosterone kinetic profile. Um, and so I think because prostate cancer is so common, uh, this is probably why it's, you know, pretty interesting to a large audience, you know, like from JAMA Oncology, not to mention it is from two randomized clinical trials. The use of, you know, radiation therapy, if we were to look at, let's say, NCCN guidelines, the, the number of indications and, you know, category one indications for radiation throughout NCCN guidelines has exponentially increased over the past decade. And specifically in prostate cancer, it's probably one of the greatest because it's expanded throughout localized disease, recurrent disease, now oligometastatic disease, and even there's increasing data and randomized data coming out in the castrate resistance setting. So it, it's something that I foresee only continuing to expand given that we are able with, the, you know, it's numerous modes of technology has enabled this, this what's called disruption. We have better imaging, you know, PSMA PET, MRI imaging that decades ago we weren't uh, using in the way we are now, or it wasn't even available. We are, have far more accurate radiation therapy. So we're able to deliver high doses very accurately and sometimes just one single treatment or a few treatments. So it's far more convenient and effective. Um, and we have better technology with the image guidance in delivering that radiation. So when you kind of combine these all together, we're seeing across cancer types, uh, uh, this emergence of metastasis-directed therapy where we're radiating 
numerous metastatic sites, and there's trials ongoing treating up to 10 sites, um, because when you think of giving chemotherapy, for example, chemotherapy in most solid tumors is, does not result in a cure. It's killing off, we call it cytoreduction. It's killing some percentage of the cancer cells, not all of them. Well, if you can safely and accurately target radiation to the visible cancer cells, you may be able to uh, kill as much, potentially even more cancer at, at a fraction of the side effects because you're not obviously delivering radiation to the entire body. So I think this concept is undergoing and has undergone numerous, you know, randomized phase two trials. There's some ongoing randomized phase three trials. So I, I do think that the combination of radiation with systemic therapy across GU oncology, I mean, bladder cancer, it, it's a very large trial, just finished accruing a SWOG uh, trial with uh, bladder preservation with adding an immunotherapy agent to radiation therapy. Um, and, and I think this will only continue to expand.